Hello Africa and welcome to another episode of African Student Voices on AU TV. We are coming to you live from the headquarters of the Association of African Universities, Accra, Ghana. I'm your host, Ajibana Chodako. You can follow us on the social media platforms AU underscore six seven on Twitter or Association of African Universities on Facebook and YouTube. Today we're discussing entrepreneurship in practice, unveiling many ways we can identify opportunities and then start businesses. But before we begin the discussion, we'll have to go for a quick pause. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back, and if you just joined us, it is African Student Voices, and today we're discussing entrepreneurship in practice. With me in the studio is an astute career and human resource building, capacity building expert. He is the coordinator of the John Ajikun Kufo Scholarship Fund, and also the CEO of Focus Central Company Limited. It's my honor to Welcome, Dr. Pascal Brenya, to African Service. Welcome, Doc. Brother, you're welcome. Thank you. Great. Um, this is most anticipating. Um, many students in Africa are really looking forward to see some of the hidden opportunities on campuses or even around them in this world so they can now tap into these opportunities and make money as entrepreneurs. But it seems or it occurs that it's bleak. How well can you help us? Tell us about the entrepreneur's mindset. What is the mindset of an entrepreneur, basically? Because in case we don't see how they see things, basically. So I probably will start from this. Um, if you have actually ever smelled currency, notes, you know, whether it's Nara or CD or dollars, the fresh notes, if you can actually have a smell of it, it makes you feel a desire for money. Yes. That desire of money is a mindset. You need to really have something moving you for you to feel having this would actually make life more comfortable and I'll be able to be more impactful in any capacity I find myself. So if you have this as a basis and background, then you start thinking, look, God who created me and gave me a purpose on this earth would appreciate me better when I fully developed myself. Okay. So you start with the self. The value you place to yourself for you to really be able to put in yourself in a position where you can actually do and have what we call multiple source of funds. So multiple source of incomes. So you're based not on your nine to five or eight to five salary, but there's something that is pushing you beyond because when you put it all together, it's not enough. So you are still looking to be able to come up with something. But to put it quite simple, we are created to solve problems. And anybody who wakes up and feels there is a problem I would like to find a solution to is an entrepreneur. But, Doc, you know, we have this nose to small money, as you just said. We, we are testy to make it in life. We want to make the money. But the issue is we can't spot opportunities. Where are they? How do we get them? What kind of techniques can we identify them? You know, the interesting part, people will say critical thinking. Okay, and you also need to be able to use the right side of your brain. Yeah. Uh, most of us Africans, unfortunately, we tend to be a little bit logical. Okay. So one plus one should be two. Sure. And these tend to be a bit deviant when it comes to people who are glues in entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. But having said that, everything can be developed. Okay. You can actually develop your mind to be able to think and write for you. Okay. It starts with the self-talks, the things that you are allowed to hear or speak about. 
tend to possess you. So the more you speak those things, if it's negative, then you're actually followed. And then if you actually project that mindset and also put yourself or associate yourself with the right people, trust me, it just opens doors for you and it allows you to have those kind of mindset that will help you to be creative enough to identify problems and then provide solutions. You know, when you go after money, mm -hmm. and that is what quite a long amount of times people do, mm -hmm. when you go after money, you never get the money. Okay. But when you identify a problem and you want to solve it, money will follow you. So all the young ones who have actually created from WhatsApp to Twitter, all everything, Facebook, it started from a college setup. So that means that if you are still in a college, actually that is where the ideas generate. Sure. And every day as you walk about in your university campuses, there are opportunities, dozens and thousands and one. But we are all enrolled from level 100. And all we tell you is just make sure you focus on your books. So you graduate. Yeah. But my brother, I know people who actually have first class, but they are still home unemployed. So again, some of the orientation given from beginning has not really helped most of us. Entrepreneurship, you probably will hear it when you get to university. Hardly do you even hear it when you are actually in secondary school. So the basis is weak when it comes to entrepreneurship. You don't have that entrepreneurship mindset. A police officer who is an entrepreneur could do a better job. A lecturer who is an entrepreneur or have a mindset of that can actually teach very well and do well. It is also very important that even a president of a country who is an entrepreneur or have an entrepreneur mindset is able to manage properly. A pastor, the word of God, who is an entrepreneur can win more souls and keep church and grow church better than somebody who is not. Mm -hmm. So it is something that we just have to do as much as we can to get it in our genes. And when we do that, it open other doors and opportunities for us to move on. With, with this issue of finding ways and means, the opportunities, I guess, finding problems and solving them, we have a, a popular saying that we need capital. We don't have capital. I mean, you can't just take a step without wetting the ground. Where do we get capital? Does it take huge capital to begin something, basically? Uh, then that, 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 would, that would let me focus more on what uh, Big Cross. Mm -hmm. Big Cross is a guy who is quite, uh, he's been quite, he's one of those renowned people who have dealt a lot to start up. And he has set up quite a number of organizations and he has also incubated numerous organizations okay. in the world. Okay. But he sat down one day and asked himself, what are the factors that makes companies or startups succeed or fail? And it will surprise you. These five factors that he looked is ideas. I use personally to believe that with wonderful idea and intensity, you can create anything and you actually be able to set up a company just like that. But you can have a wonderful idea. But if other things, the factors that comes into it, is not actually sinking, then you have difficulties. So people have wonderful idea without thinking through. So they start on the ground and within a short time it just cramped. Okay. So again, he actually look at idea, have a wonderful idea, and a team to execute these ideas. You need a team, wonderful team, because you will not be able to get all your capabilities and abilities to be able to actually manipulate and apply to get the solid ground and foundation that you want for the business to survive. Okay. So you need a team. Okay. So you have your wonderful team. And then he went further and said, look, apart from that, you need a business model. Okay. Of course, you need to articulate a clear view on what your business is going to stand for okay. and how different is it going to be for the other person out there. So you need a business model, wonderful one. You go further to say funding. Mm -hmm. Of course you need funding. Very important. All right. And that is what most part of Africa, to be honest with you, our focus is funding. My brother, mm -hmm. if funding becomes your basis of looking at entrepreneurship, you are failed from a start. Really? Nobody is going to give you money. You can start a business. And when you are under funding, and then you're able to gain traction, I'm telling you, money will come. And that's why the bank comes after you when you are doing something. But they will never support you when you are doing nothing, and you go to them wanting the money to start something. People will only trust you when they know you have done it before, or they know you know what you are doing, and you are doing it accordingly. You can write a wonderful business plan, nobody will marry you. But would you be able to start something? And that is why humble beginning has always been a success for most great and big entrepreneurs. So that's very important. And he didn't finish there. Bill went on and just look at what we call timing mm -hmm. as well. So we have element of timing, funding, business model, team, and of course, the ideas. ideas. And guess this what? Which of these do you think came first? Which of these five? Give a guess. 
Which of them is the most important factor that you need for your business to succeed? I think it's the idea. You think the idea? I Wonderful think, idea? I think I did. But I guess you, you, you didn't do too bad. But I tell you, the ideas was actually 28% really? of the success of a business. You tell me. You tell me why. And then I will also go to team. You need a team to execute this. And the team is only 32%. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you're wondering. It's oh. left with what? Business model, um, funding, and what? Timing. I want to know. And I know you are guessing, but you probably will guess wrong. <laughs> Let me just help you out. 24% was business model. Mm. Articulate clearly what you want to do. That's surprising. Funding. The almighty funding that we cry for in Africa. Guess what? It was just 14%. 14%. That is why you can have plenty of money because you are dreaming for it. <laughs> you will never be able to think entrepreneur. You will never be able to identify any problem to solve. Okay. The one that was a leading on this research is actually timing. Timing. That's right, my brother. <sighs> and that is when somebody asks you, is it right time? Mm. If I have a good idea and I mention it and you're like, I need it. I want it right now. In design thinking, we have something that we call empathy map. empathy map. When you actually form your business based on the person. So you actually look at a person's behavior, his acting and all that. And you actually, the person tells you, this is what I need. And he said, look, because of these problems, I'm going to provide this solution. The person said, if only you can do that, I will part away my salary and share with you. You are solving problems. And it's so critical. So the timing means that you actually be able to come in at a time when people need it most. There are certain products that came to the market too quick, and it was a failure. Mm -hmm. There are products that came into the market or services that was provided too late, and already people have taken apart. So timing becomes a very critical. When you look at Africa, okay, mm -hmm. this is more of, we can probably do that. He has actually done these um, businesses across the globe. But when you look African typically, as much as funding might be a critical point, being able to think and come up with a wonderful idea by identifying a problem becomes a challenge for most young people and students as well. Our creative thinking ability. We have believed what we have believed, and sometimes we don't challenge anything. Yeah. So it is just what it is. But somebody say, okay, why can't we do it differently? And the people who decide and think like that, actually then we follow them because we actually realize then that is possible. So look, take any of the countries in Africa. Most of the business that just make it are business that was sometimes it was already there, some was not. But if somebody can dream it and think it and be the first, then the movers and the shakers follow. Because that is what it's supposed to be. And that is what takes us into the blue ocean strategy. Most of you are not. Typical of our businesses in this continent. Mm -hmm. When you see people doing it, then you do it. People were doing transfer to transfer, mobile to mobile. Look at when Internet Cafe came. Everybody was setting up Internet as if that is a, all the job that could ever be. Mm -hmm. One person think it through, and then people are just copying it. But the more that we keep on, it becomes muddy. So the muddy bit is when we have the red ocean. We are all competing. Yeah. And once we are in this competitive world, by the time you master it, your competitor has also mastered it. So you have to either lie and sometimes you have to do everything possible so that you actually have an upper hand of the market against your competitor. How often can we keep on rubbing shoulders among ourselves? The banks do that. The telecoms will do that. Almost every facet that when you go, this is the challenge. But the question is, can't you do something differently? And that is the introduction of the Blue Ocean. So the Blue Ocean strategy is going beyond what is ordinary. Okay. Okay, there's a guy called Sergio. Sergio was a good in pole boat. He won many, 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 over 28 times was the world champion. All right. About 14 times. This guy broke his own record. Who is your competitor? Yourself. As a businessman, as a startup, as a young student, who is your competitor? Yourself. It means that what you have right now, you could be 14 times better. He didn't know that. But when he kept on, excelling, when he kept on putting value into himself, exercising more, then he realized that he was actually 14 times better. But 28 times he won, 14 times he broke his own record. Can you imagine, my brother? So within us as people, there is a better part of us, some of us has not even dreamed about or try to even inherit. But that is very important. We need to sit down and think about it. Look at our surrounding. What is it that I'm good at? What can I do? Some could be a better haircut. 
barbers. They could do that. Groom people, they could do that excellent job. But once you start level 100, they throw that into the window. Who else can be a seamstress? Who else can be a hairdresser? Who else can bake better? Who can even peel oranges better? Because you see, the essence of going through the educational system is that it affects every facet of your life. So everything that you do, you do it better. So if we have people who are selling and doing most of these things, other people who do not have even the hygiene, they haven't heard about hygiene. They do it the way they do it, right? And yeah. people get sick. Sure. People get food poisoning and all that. Yeah. So if we actually have people who are graduates to do it, my brother, it will be better for almost everybody. So it means that there are quite a door of opportunity that even happen on campuses for us. But unfortunately, we stick on to that. So timing is important. Idea is important. The team to help you. Your business model is excellent. And you need the funding. But there are opportunities if your idea and all these other factors are actually online, on track. You probably don't need to convince people that much. So if I come up with a product and I can explain it to you within a short time and then you say, oh, voila, I want this. I need this. How did you know I need it? That means that you actually going to have the market before you even produce. That's amazing, but Doc, you know, there's this feeling of fear. You know, I starting something and I'm falling. I mean, I, I feel ashamed. I can't rise up anymore because it's a better experience falling with that experience. What do you have to say about that? If you've never failed before, you can't even actually become a successful entrepreneur. Failure is part of the process that you go through. Except that many a times, most of us will go for too much loans. We have equity and we have debt. People focus more on debt. They like to borrow to start a business. When you do so and there's a fall and your banks are after you, my brother, you can't have a peace of mind. You will never dream of even getting back again. That is why care needs to be taken. And I've said that before, humble beginning. Yeah. How do you start with what you have? Many a times, you know, it is what you have in your hands. Something that you have total control over. Can you manage small? If you can, of course you can manage big. But there are some who have never managed small. How are you going to manage big? And many times too, it's the mindset. We're all brought up, my brother, thinking that, look, I need to grow up as a young student, finish my qualification, education. When I finish, get a good job, get married, buy a house and buy a car. Or build a house and get a car. You see, that, that mindset is actually our focus. So there are people who borrowed. And when they borrow the money to start a business, before they can see profit, they have started spending. They are close to church or the mock will start changing. But that's not profit. That is actually working capital. You're supposed to be working. And when the profit comes, then you can sit down. But people don't even have the patience to wait for the profit to come. So they start spending before they even see profit. It's wrong. So again, the mindset also have an interplay. How it affects us to be able to grow business to the point that we know this business has, can survive. And then I can scale it. I've opened it over here, then I have to go somewhere else to open another one. So now I can... But how do you scale businesses when the fundamentals of the beginning is shaky? It can't work. So again, the fear of failure is part of human life. But brother, we will fail. You put yourself together. And then you move on. Entrepreneurs see behind. They see beyond. They, you know, for now, yes. But... The failure today is an experience for you for tomorrow. You will not repeat those mistakes again. And those are very cool. It helps. So failure is part of it. We need to be able to know that it's part of it. And that's what humble beginnings help. So when you do that, you can use family and friends' money for you to do that. Friends will understand you. They know that you mess up. And then they can forgive you for you to push it up. So it is always important for you to do the humble beginning. When the failure comes, you can manage it. And the failure become a lesson for you for the next step. Failure is very necessary to rise up again and excel in your business. If you just joined us, African Student Voices, and we're discussing entrepreneurship in practice. Stay tuned, right back.
welcome back and if you just joined us you're watching african student forces on au tv and we're discussing entrepreneurship and practice it is for the students and many graduates out there who are finding it hard to start their own businesses because they can't identify any opportunity or they are struggling with capital our expert here is showing us ways and means we can be entrepreneurs or start our own businesses without so much capital so let's come back to um i want to i want you to take us back to the basis how can we identify opportunities using what we can do what if i can't do nothing no i never attended any vocational school i come back here i wasn't taught anything special can't i do anything you can do something as long as you sleep and wake up you can do something and that is why i say sometimes you start from where you live mm -hmm. look at your surroundings what are some, some things that you struggle for you to either buy or get? What are some of the things that you pay money for? You actually realize that people will pay you money because there's something they want to be done that they cannot do themselves because they don't have the knowledge or because they don't have the time or because they don't even have the know-how. Okay? So these are elements that will make somebody want to put money away. Mm -hmm. So if you ask yourself the same thing, the money in my pocket, why would I give it to somebody else? Unless these factors are met. So if that is the case, then look, what is it that I struggle to get? What can make life even better for me? What do we spend a lot of time wasting time before we can get that? What can I offload for somebody else to do for me? And there are plenty of thoughts that comes into your mind. You need to really sometimes sit down and reflect what we call self-introspect. My brother, the greatest question is asking yourself, what is the biggest question I'm actually on this planet to solve? Why am I here? So if you are passing through, then of course you go to university and graduate, but you just become a passenger. And there are many. So if you want to join them, you make no effort. You're not even thinking for a start. So the basis is really to sit down and reflect. You are here for a purpose. Yeah. You are not passing through. Sure. You want to leave a mark. Mm -hmm. In your absence, people need to remember you. Yes. But for that to happen, it means your presence must be impactful. You only have a moment of your life to live. And when you are gone, you are gone. So for you to really make sure that you become impactful on this earth, then I'll take opportunity for you to impact your soul. Mm -hmm. The community that you live in. Yeah. The people who are around. What is it that you do for them for a joy? Mm -hmm. Can you translate that into business opportunities? The churches that you attend. Now you go to churches and after church you see people selling ice cream cake, people selling, uh, um, you know, soya milk. It's a whole lot of things. People bring meat bar, people even bake breads and bring it over there. So again, people come there with business mindset because they want to make business. And if your church people accept what you sell, then of course you can actually scale it easily because they would actually be what your testimony and tell other people for your product to be upscale. And it's so very important. Your family, can your family accept what you're doing? What is it that you do for them that makes them comfortable? Bring a joy into their face. If that is the case, why don't you replicate it and make it nice? So again, you actually would notice that some and many of African successful entrepreneurs are the ones who were pushed to the wall before they started thinking. Mm. But my prayer is that God should bring that kind of trouble and pain to people until they have a mindset for them to become entrepreneurs. So, you know, Typical of us as Africans tend to be like the Israelites on the move, right? Yeah. And then here we have Moses in front of them. The Red Sea was parted. Mm -hmm. Moses said, okay, now you can go through. I bet these guys were not going to walk in there. Because they were thinking, what if we get into the middle and God decides to see it again? <laughs> but the Bible says that when they saw those who were coming, they were running. They ran. <laughs> yes. We need to get that point as Africans. Sure. Most successful entrepreneurs will tell you, you know, I was kicked out of my house, I was living on the street, I was selling in the traffic, and then later on, you know, somebody called me, and then the person said, it's always a story of pushing to the wall. We don't need to be pushed to the wall before we start thinking. Because we need multiple sources of income. Many people are dying because the money is not enough. Insufficient money, it doesn't allow you to do what you want to do. But you have so many responsibilities. How do you actually meet this responsibility? Multiple sources of income. And this is fundamental in people's life. Yeah. Don't get to a state of distress before you think as an entrepreneur, but take opportunity around you. So you go to work, fine. You have got a job, fine. You work in the office, at the end of the month, something comes in. 
what can you do on the side? Could you get somebody to sit at the corner to do mobile transfer for you, sell credit and do that? At the end of the day, the person is making 50 Ghana cities for you. Could you just stop somebody, okay, and then set the person up to even sell popcorn because there are schools around and then put the points together. Pay the person, my brother, and it's a joy when you are paying somebody else. Pay the person at the end of the month or at the end of the week. And every day the person is making 50 Ghana cities for you. If you put that money together, a roasted plantain on the street. Have you spotted the place? Coconut. Have you, can you make somebody into that business? There are quite a lot of young people who want to do something like that. So if it's coconut that you're actually the intermediary, they, some of them even hide a truck. You need a truck that they put it on. They hide the truck and pay every day. And then some of them pay like five cities every day. The cost of the truck is just about 100 Ghana cities or 150 Ghana cities. Come to think about it. How many of them can you buy? How many people can you give business to? How much profit can you make in a day? So you are still in the school studying, but you are thinking over here. We need that mindset for African to change. Africa can only change when we have people who think entrepreneur. And that is what we keep on saying, that is the way forward. We need the dango tears. You see, we need almost all, we need all these guys to be able to really think businesses and help us open the door. But the thinking has to be there. Creativity. You know when you put Africans together and they actually want to do something, they do it. They and do. they excel anywhere they go. Yes. But right in our, our continent, we need to have that mindset of being able to create identified problems and make it happen. Does it seem as if uh, we are being pampered these days? The, the young people nowadays want more of spoon feet, more, of, more, more encouragement. We want to be encouraged to be independent business-wise, rather than being pushed, as you mentioned earlier. Have you heard the story about millennials? These are the young ones, you know, those coming up and all that. You know, they say that they want food, and they also want uh, bean bags. So when they finish eating the food, they can just uh, wrap it in those that they couldn't eat. You know, they have what they do. And we are more engaged into our telephone, the WhatsApp takes almost all our time. And we keep on doing this. Our focus is there. Somebody is creating the WhatsApp for you. Are you thinking about another WhatsApp? Or you are enjoying the WhatsApp? So all we can do best is to become second fiddle. We're just there, using it. But can't we sit down and ask ourselves? My brother, there's a lot as a young Africans need to come up to. For me, every day, Quite a number of young Africans die when their music is still playing. We die prematurely. We die with set talent. The continent of Africa is hosting the youngest in the world. This young generation with this zeal, the tenacity, where, where exactly are we building our hopes from? My brother, if an African man without knowing destination can travel here and go through Libya, wanting to go to Europe, that guy is a different kind of guy in a different spirit. But I tell you what, people like that engage their focus into something fruitful. And trust me, as a continent, we'll never regret it. We are not turning it. We are not using it properly. We are not. And for that matter, the youth are in distress. The youth are confused. And the role models are not setting a path that is really cool. So many a times people will join into politics. They go into politics, and when they go into politics, they fast money. They want money. Now yeah. people go to churches, it's not too bad. They want to establish more churches because that is also another fast-growing enterprise in Industry, Africa. Yeah. So people want to really go into that. that that's nothing wrong. But the point is that there are others who go into prostitution. There are others who go into arm robbery. There are others who go to scam. How many times do people sit down to engineer? Look at the mindset to be able to engineer and call you and tell you that, my brother, you have something from a bro from one of your friends. Just come and pay this. I will go and get it from the port for you. They even do it to pastors. People will call you, I will, I'm an engineer, I, 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 come and do this. So many scam going on. My brother, it affects almost everybody. So we need to set up and ask ourselves, what can we do for the basis? Let's have the African man to develop. Our mind needs to be actually more focused. What problem can I solve? And there's plenty of them. You don't need to sit back and have an interview or research, but you identify quite a number of problems. Which of them can I solve so at ease? And, and, and there are some that you probably don't need money to start. There are many people who started something. Let me give you a typical example. Yeah. There's a guy who visited his father. And this guy, when he got into his father's living room, there was a football match going on. And this football match, the commentator is the one who said, if only somebody can find solution to this problem, 
And the guy just glanced at the TV and he saw that, you know, it was a foul. The referee would put the ball there, position himself, position the players, and then he whistled. But before he whistled, the players had run back onto the football. It was going on for more than five good minutes. The game is getting boring. And when he looked at it, he said, oh, this is interesting. He went back home, and guess what? He picked up his shaving foam. Mm -hmm. The one that you put there before you shave. Mm -hmm. Put it on the floor forever he was there. But he looked at it and went to the company that actually invented it and said, guys, I want you to invent something for me so that when you put it on the floor, it will vanish within a short time. And the guy said, we haven't done that before. I said, okay, good, you can do it. Is it possible? They said, okay, let's do a few research. We can use papain and vegetables so that it's not harmful to human skin. And it doesn't. So he said, okay, go ahead. They did only one box. The guy paid for it. And guess what? He took it straight to FIFA. And he said, FIFA, I have a solution for you. My brother, this idea cannot overpass and unpass any single African man. Why did we think like that? Now, if you see what we call magic spray in football, it's because of this guy who, in his father's living room, saw a television set a commentator who said, can somebody find a problem to solve? The facts are there to check. The whole world woke up one day and everybody was torn apart because there were three, two 14-year-old and one 13-year-old who they shook the whole world. Sure. That's what the, we wake up, medical, even the medical world. When you actually go and do a test, how long does it take before you get a result? These guys are guys at this age. They're not probably thinking about sex. But guess what? They are the guys who came up with a condom. Condoms has a different color. But the condom have a natural color. Mm -hmm. But this condom, if a man put it on, and a man have intercourse with a woman, the condom will change according to the disease the woman possesses. Mm. Chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, HIV. Right away, as a man gets into a woman, You'll be able to tell what this is. Whether you continue or you stop, that's the decision a man has to make, my brother. But two 14 year old and one 13 year old, wow, how, take, take a typical African 14 year old, what do we think? think playing on a beach, playing, 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 playing. My brother, Somehow. we have a responsibility. If we don't do something to save this generation, you know, and sometimes it is not your bringing. Your parents advise you, oh, you're going to school, be careful. You are from a poor home. Just, just make sure that you play along with poor people. How could mm. poor poverty becomes rich? It's not possible. So it means we need to have a wake-up call, my brother. And that is very important. If you look at the story behind WhatsApp, these are guys who have seen numerous times of failure. After they graduated, among other places they went looking for a job was Facebook. They were turned down because they didn't have experience. Guess what? Within a short years, this guy came out with WhatsApp, and Facebook paid them $16 billion. Record is there to check to be able to get WhatsApp. Think about it. They could have remained employees, but they did not. They decided to think. So when doors are also shut in front of you, it's time for you to think. Typical of us as Africa. Maybe it's time for you to reflect. What can I provide solution for? Onto some of the issues that happened with our Moabin case. Trust me, it's a success story. It's a success story because loans were not approved for 48 hours. And he was able to do that, and he will come after you. I think you should have probably carried on with that. But that helps a lot of people. A lot of people. And he was able to do that successfully. When the banks were trying to identify where you live, da, 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 he knows what to grab from you if you do not pay the loan. And he will come after that. It was a success story to tell. Who is thinking? What is coming into your mind? What can you do to make a difference? My brother, there are problems. And problems need solution. And anybody who sat down to come up with a solution, it's an entrepreneur. And that is what we need. But sometimes, you know, you can identify the problem. And when you discuss with people, you see the number of people who will feel something has to be done. Who is going to do it? Team work together. We can do it. I'm telling you, we can make this continent one of the best ever. You see, we all see problems every day in our life. We talk about it. Nothing is done. And sometimes we become corporate ourselves. Because the more you live in filth, you become filthy. And that is a fact. So we need to have that kind of orientation in our mindset. Allow individuals, let them have a basic form of education. Some could do good footballing, but they are still in classroom. Fine, academies are there for them to make the two together. Some could be good seamstress. Who said not? We can. 
But the point is that we sit in a classroom and what we think about is just going to the mainstream. Get a job. We work for organization for so long. You would actually do that. You will live average life. You will die average and you will not be remembered. And your children, unfortunately, will come with us because the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. Like the father, like a son. That is why when you look at companies like Ford, up to perpetuality, they're still there, right? It's continuing. Companies like that are there. Successful companies. And there are companies that also did not survive. It's possible. But in Africa, how many successful businesses started from generation to generation? What are we handing over? Doc, I, I want you to help, help our, our listeners, our viewers, um, with two things. When someone wants to enter into a business, as volunteerism a form of being an entrepreneur in the first place? Can we add a touch of entrepreneurism to being an, a volunteer in the first place? I think that is the best way to do it. You know, part of what I do, I work as a career counselor. And unfortunately, you know, a number of times you see students who are going to, I remember one time I was asked to speak at POSA, um, political science. Yeah. And then I asked a question, how many of you are doing this course out of default? But you didn't really, it's not a choice, but it's given to you. Almost about 80% went up. How many people didn't don't actually like the course? Your hands went up. How many of you think that you don't have a future by the time you graduate? Hands went up. And I said, look, I share with you, but it's something I have to tell you. You might not like the course that is handed over to you for your first degree, but give yourself a best shot. Because if you actually get a first class, by the time you graduate, you have opportunity to do your master's. But with first class, you are likely to get a scholarship. Mm -hmm. So give your best shot. But you see, when you are actually not motivated enough and you don't like the course, yeah. you don't have passion, then of course, you are preparing for you to get a it's hard. third class. Yeah. So that is not good enough. So I challenge them. But you see, my brother, we come through institution of higher learning. Mm -hmm. We are confused right from the word go. You never get to do the course you want, number one. Sure. You graduated almighty national service or youth service in Nigeria. Okay. Takes you to a place that you are not prepared for. Yeah. And then when you go there, what you study doesn't really gear with what you're doing. You are more confused. By the time you finish, you are not too sure whether to marry, travel, um, get a job hoping that they will retain you. <laughs> You're not too sure whether they will or not. So, a whole, so people get more confused after national service. Direction, purpose of life. Are you working purposefully? What is it that you are hoping to achieve or do? Your first degree might not be enough. You might need to have a speciality when it comes to your master's. You might not even get a course you want to do in Ghana, but you can apply. These days, there are quite numerous scholarships that you can apply. Give it a try. Give it a go. All this has to start from the basis. And there are certain elements you need to add. Your ability to even speak another language like French. Your ability to drive. Your ability to learn a vocation. And that is where volunteerism has into vocation. You can actually volunteer and say, look, I've seen that Valley View is doing a good job mm -hmm. in terms of bakery. Their bread normally runs up. People want their soya bread. You know, it, it, it's good. I'm going to really sacrifice six months. Or during the three-month vacation, I'm just going to wake up every day and go and help them bake. My brother, you're a baker. By the time you finish, you can put a team of people for them to bake and supervise them. You have a bake. You have a bakery. You're working. You have a job. You can volunteer. You can volunteer to work for a seamstress or a tailor for six months. My brother, you don't need to go and pay money. But just say, I'm coming to help you. I'll help you with the pattern and design. By the time you finish, you are so intense yourself. You can always, so we can do that. That kind of patriotism and volunteerism is dying off in our generation. It's dying off. But we need to bring it back. When you do that, carpentry, you can go into it, my brother. And then, you know, when you are out of this country, you realize that there are many things, if you actually learned them, you would have been most of the richest people when you are out. Can you imagine a student who leave the shores of Africa studying in all of these European countries and he knows how to sew? So he buy the materials, sew it, and sew it for people on campuses and the students. Think about it. You won't pay tax because you do it in your own room. Mm -hmm. You have the, all the sophisticated tailors you want, you have it. But you are there. You can do embroidering, all of them just like that. But you are still studying to come up with the best class. Who said you cannot combine? You can't. That is a multiple port approach. Different sources of income to help you. So my brother, it's possible. It's doable. Let's sacrifice a lot. And I like people when you say, I want to work in a bank. And I ask you, have you had any internship in a bank before? No. 
I want to become an accountant. I said, okay, cool. That's fine. You're studying for it. But have you ever worked in an accounting firm before? No. My brother, how do you become what you want to become when you have not had a taste of it? It doesn't, it doesn't work. So sometimes, give us, and there are many people who have opportunity for them to do internship. And after a while, you ask them after the internship, is this something that you really want to work? You want to say, no, no, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> so that means there is something. Do you, do you get my whole point? So that is how it starts. We need to bring a lot, and we need to be able to take certain risks in our life. We've been too quiet and more formal and routine. We're too much. We, we don't want to put... It is too, it's, too, it's so very easy for you to grow up in Africa and live and die without being impactful. And when you do that, then it's purposeless. And that is not what you want. Can you touch about um, the role models in Africa? Those who have already made this entrepreneurship. You mentioned that they were also doing what they were supposed to do. Yeah. What do you expect them to do in times like these? I have a mentor. Uh, you know, I, apart from people that I look at, Professor Bafwa is my dear, is my mentor. I also use a karma group of company, Dr. Ajakum Adu. Sure. As a mentor. Why are these people my mentor? My brother, if you do not have a mentor, you have no idea. You have nowhere to go. Mm -hmm. You need mentors. Mentor. You need people who have walked the path before you. They will advise you where it was slippery and where it fell. You don't need to fall when you get there. So it is very important for us to have mentors. You need to identify somebody and let the person be a mentor for you. So the person guide you along the way. So it is important to have one or two mentors in different fields who are able to mentor you and be able to share and inspire you to even go further and further. And there's quite a lot of linkages. And this is what is built on your social capital. Who is within this network of yours? Have you deliberately have a medical doctor as a friend? Do you even have an accountant as a friend? Do you have a lawyer as a friend? Do you keep in touch with these people when they meet? Do you meet and rock shoulders? Do you hear them together when you go for lunch? Some of the statements somebody will make once at a lunch table will change your destiny. You can pack your stuff and leave work. Because, yes, the Erika moment has come. Yeah. I found it. I found it. And that can set you off and you will never look back. So you need that. It is so very important to have a mentor who will guide you through life. And that is really needful. Very, very needful. You need to make a conscious effort because it wouldn't come naturally. We don't wake up having the people. So you have your family again. You have your family support you. But you need to expand the scope and find some important people. When it comes to friendship, there are some that we can let go. Because eventually, if people do not increase you, they decrease you. So you need to choose your friends carefully. But what kind of a friend network do you build your base? It's very important in this 21st century to have people behind you and behind your back. Well, Doc, so you shared with us a number of things to consider and how they, they tell if you will succeed in your business. You said it should be an, it should be an idea, there should be a team, yeah. there should be some funding, there should be a yeah. business model yeah. and also um, a framework to help you do business. If today yeah. any African students on this continent will want to consider what you're saying, that, okay, I'm going to give in this time, I won't be afraid. I will step up on my idea. What message do you have for any African student who has tried so many times and who had watched other people feel and therefore had advised himself in quotes that I would they want to go entrepreneur, I'll wait for a job, I'll write applications and roam about on the streets and still complain about being unemployed. What message do you have for them to push them to the wall to step up now? What most young people are afraid of is discipline. Discipline. Entrepreneurship requires a sense of discipline. You will not be able to drive the car you want. You can't even afford it. You cannot actually rent a place that you want to see your business today because you are not there yet. Yeah. You can actually, my brother, and this is very critical, be able to enjoy the moment in terms of time. We need with friends for you to socialize. It requires sacrifice. And that sacrifice and discipline is what people run away from. People are more comfortable to see their salary at the end of the month. But they don't want to go through the pain until the point that they break even. But you need a struggling moment to come and pass before you can get to where you want to get to. Yeah. And those are uh, things that people do not have patience for. But you need a patient. There are certain things is a patient. It takes a lot of time and energy. There's a patient. My brother, I, I actually finished my doctorate almost about 11 years ago, 2006. 
it has taken me up to this time for me to afford a house, afford a brand new car that I want. It takes time. I've grown businesses till now. It takes time. People don't have the patience. You need the patience to, because when you get to that point too, you are comfortable. And sometimes life, joy, and happiness is not how many cars, how many houses, how many children, how many wives. That is not what we look and judge. How many lives have you impacted? So if you believe that you're on this earth to impact life, then this moment is your moment. Sure. Africa is a virgin. There are many opportunities that you can actually grab and hold. Yeah. How does it challenge yourself and say, you, 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 you yourself, you're on this earth to solve a problem. What problem has God brought you here to solve? and provide a solution to it. And the rest of them, money will follow you. Rise up African youth and be so inspired to solve a problem. And that is how financial freedom and entrepreneurship is embedded. This is where Africa to Invest will end. We believe that you are impacted and then you are filled with inspiration because Doc has really said a lot on how you can break off those shackles and start your own business. Thank you for watching. And see you next time on African Student Voices. I'm your host, Ajibona Chudako. Bye.